Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Border Hookups Go RVing. Today we're going to be talking about water bladders. Are they worth it? Pros, cons? So stick around. So a little background information, when we started RVing full time, we didn't know anything. We had spent two years watching videos about other people doing it, but we had never been out here ourselves. And the more we got out here, the more that we thought, we really like boondocking. And for those of you who do not know what boondocking in is, boondocking is when you live kind of off grid, you're not plugged in, you're not hooked to water, um, you're not hooked to sewer, you're kind of out there on BLM land, which is Bureau of Land Management is what that uh, stands for and we said you know what we really like the boondocking um, we invested in solar so far so good we love it so that we can be off-grid but one of the biggest issues that you might run into is water and so we looked at that and I started asking around in the campground or actually the boondocking site that we were in and a friend of mine Scott said you know what you need to look into a water bladder up to this point, I had um, these uh, five gallon jugs, which were great, but um, they took up a lot of room. So uh, he started to tell me about water bladders, and basically it's a large fabric water balloon. And uh, I ended up getting, in this case, the Aquamatic 2, which cost me uh, $160, and we have that available in our store if you wanna check that out too. I really like it, I like the durability of it, I love the ease of use, um, but today we're gonna talk about why you use a water bladder as opposed to water jugs. So what does our water bladder look like? Right here, this thing holds 60 gallons. That's a lot of water, that's the amount of fresh water that we can carry on board, 60 gallons. And um, the, one of the nice things about having a water bladder is ease of storage. Um, proof is right here. It can fold up this small. Um, also ease to fill because it does have um, connector spouts on it. I'll open it up here and show you. It has one here and it has one here. So one can be used for venting, the other one can be used for filling and emptying, and it has a little valve here too at the, at the end of the spout. Um, when it's unfolded, it's at 36 by 48 by 16, which is a really uh, sizable but manageable size to fit into the bed of your truck. The other nice thing about it is it's easy to empty because you just keep it hooked to the hose. Now I will talk about the fact that one of the downsides of it is if you have a gravity fill, you're not going to be able to put this thing on your shoulders because uh, it would be very heavy and very cumbersome to try to um, lift over your head to try to do a gravity fill. We have a, a power fill or a siphon fill, so we just hook, hook it right up to our system and it pulls the water out. Um, you want to be very careful about when you have this in the back of your truck because think about you're going down the road and this thing, it doesn't slide, but the water moves over the top. So, well, imagine a water balloon in the back of your truck. So you want to be very, very careful about that. One thing that you might be asking yourself is why do I need a water bladder? Why do I need water jugs? Well, here's the reason. If you're out boondocking and, or even for that matter, in a campground that does not provide water, you don't want to have to hook up your rig every time you need to get water, haul it over to the water station or haul it into town and then bring it back. You want to be able to have something that's portable you can put in the back of your truck um, or your tow vehicle and you can drive it over, fill it, bring it back and your camper doesn't have to move. So that means not pulling in slides, not unchocking the tires, not putting everything away, not hooking up. It's very mobile and it's very, very easy. Now there are some drawbacks, I'm not sure that they're really drawbacks, but some things that don't work as well as say a five gallon jug. One is um, 
if you have a gravity fill, it's tough to lift that bag onto your shoulders and um, put in 60 gallons of water, 30 gallons of water, 10 gallons of water would be tough with that. Imagine trying to handle a water balloon over your head while trying to fill your camper up with water. The other thing is, if you don't have that truck, maybe you don't have a place to put it. Um, you don't, probably don't want to put it in the back seat of your vehicle because if something were to happen, it were to leak or it were to puncture, um, you don't want 60 gallons, 30 gallons, 10 gallons of water in the back of your Geo Metro. So you want to make sure um, uh, that you have a place to store it easily. The other thing is cost. Um, $160 for our 60 gallon on our Amazon store, as you can check out too if you want to. Plug, plug, shameless. Um, so it is a little bit expensive. I know you can go buy jugs for probably a, a two pack for, I would say, $8. So you want to make sure that you keep that in mind as well. Another benefit of the water bladder is it's very easy to fill. Once it's in the back of your truck, and here's the big thing, make sure it's in the back of your truck or your vehicle before you fill it, because if you have to lift that thing in afterwards, that's a tough deal. So you, it's very easy to hook in, and then it just fills up, and it holds at 60 gallons, and it's very easy to empty as well. But you wanna make sure you have enough hose that you can get close enough to your rig when you get back to it um, that you're not having to lift it out of the truck because again in or out would be incredibly unruly and you don't want to get into that position so how do we empty our bladder bag we use a pump and it works like this now we had to modify this a little bit um, we had to put on uh, because this isn't really designed for garden hoses this is designed for under the RV and RV size hoses for the plumbing um, but this, all of these connectors are available at, at most hardware stores. It's just PVC piping that takes it from a certain size to a bigger size or a bigger size to a certain size and then the hoses can fit in and uh, I'm not going to get into that right now but it's a very easy modification on this pump. The reason that we use this pump is because A, we don't want to burn out the pump in our RV that's already placed in there. Second, if you have a, if you have a, a backup pump, you always have it. Um, so this just uh, plugs into our cigarette lighter in our truck and it's, this has enough cord to run from the front of the cab back to the back and then we have an on off switch that we can um, control from the, right next to the bag. And then the hose runs to either your gravity fill or it runs uh, straight into our, um, our siphon feed. And then we turn off the pump in our RV because you don't need two pumps going. Um, so this thing cost us, I would say about $35, pretty cheap, um, especially if you don't want to have to dig up, you know, your camper apart to replace a pump um, that you burned out from having to fill that, you know, empty that bag all the time. So this is definitely worth it right here. So is having a bladder bag worth it? Well, I would say yes, a definite thumbs up. Um, I believe in, in my personal opinion that it is cost effective especially if it stays around for a long time and is durable, as opposed to um, buying uh, water jugs over, over the years and they kink and they crack and things like that and they're tough to store. Um, and uh, the bladder is very easy to use and it folds up so small when you're not using it. And everybody who RVs knows how important your storage space is. So having that tiny little fold up go away go under your uh under your camper and you never even think about it and it doesn't blow out of the back of your truck as you're going down i-10 at 70 miles an hour so yes it's definitely worth it hey everybody thanks for watching another episode of the border hookups go rving and thank you to jacqueline for doing doing chewing <laughs> such a great job this week behind the camera well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and she even made the list as the things we should talk about and held me to that list. <laughs> Keeping you on track is not easy. No, it is not. <laughs> so please remember to subscribe and to ding that bell so that we can let all of you know as to when we have new episodes coming out. And thank you for doing this episode and talking about uh, the water bladder because I'm happy we have that. Gives us extra water when we're out boondocking and I don't know enough about it to talk about it, so thank you. 
And uh, if you liked what you saw in this episode, please give us a thumbs up and place a comment below. We have been absolutely loving all of the comments we've been receiving. Yep. So thank you to those of you that have been commenting and thank you to those of you that have just been watching. And we hope to see you out here. We'll see you out here. You did a great job. <laughs> you can do the subscribe stuff? I think they should subscribe <laughs> and ding that bell so that we can let all of them know when we have a new episode coming out. I think we want to let you know when we have an episode coming out. Did I say that backwards? <gasps> so how do we empty our bladder bag?